So today's mission is stacking these macro wet lenses and trying to get some good shots. So all those other shots that you guys saw, like the macro, the little skeleton shrimp and the tiny stuff, those were just this plus 10. And sometimes the plus three together with the plus 10 stacked. So that'd be like plus 13, I guess. And now, I spent a little bit of money, got another plus 10. That's awesome. So now I can stack all of them. And I think, in theory, they said I should get some super, super macro shots. Uh, but I gotta get, I gotta practice. Um, because... It can be hard to focus and stuff like that. So, I'm going to stack these tins. And that's what I'm going to be doing today is doing my best to get some super macro shots. Hmm? Critter Hunter. Morning guys. Somebody else wants to say good morning. Hey Kevin. Why are you on my dog bed? Okay. Alright. Today's gonna be a super busy day. So somebody, another YouTuber told me that I should vlog my day, not just underwater footage only. Cause I'm living in the Philippines, maybe some people want to see what it's like here, not just the critters. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you my routine, and let's call this episode one. Check this out. So, I'm gonna try to film this with one hand. So all the footage I've been getting from now, before now, is with that macro, like the skeleton shrimp and whatever, is with a plus 10 Ilon macro wet lens and it's been awesome and I also have a plus 10 or a plus 3 that I can stack on top of it here just let me show you so this is my plus 10 that I always dive with and I get awesome footage uh, the really macro stuff and this is my plus 3 it's not as great except for it does give a lot more clear images but I stack them together and I get those awesome uh, skeleton shrimp and things that are so tiny that I can't even see them with the naked eye, let alone my regular camera with no lens. But guess what? What I'm going to do today, look what I got. I got another plus 10 Ilon. This is going to be awesome. So I'm going to put these on. <laughs> Check that out. Plus 23 macro lens. So if you guys thought the footage with just the plus 10 and the plus 3 was awesome, let's see what I can get now. This is this is really expensive, but it's going to be worth it. Hey, 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 hey. Kevin. Get out of here. I got stuff to do. All right. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Still water in there. Well, this is the first time I'm using the GoPro Hero 8, so I gotta set it up. And what I wanna do with it is. I'm gonna put it on a weighted tripod and just leave it at the beginning of a dive in front of a, an enemy or some staghorn coral or something and just leave it there like a reef security camera and see what I catch. And I'll go test out these macro lenses and 
pick up the GoPro at the end of the dive after about an hour. So normally I have this little uh, hot shoe mount that goes right here. And then I would mount the GoPro right here. But today, since I'm since I'm just I'm gonna use the GoPro separately, set it up and leave it uh, at the anatomy or reef or whatever I find, and then take my main camera and leave, go film something else. Then uh, I'm not gonna use this little thing, but. This is pretty cool because I'm always set up for macro. Um, it's cool to have a GoPro as well in case like a shark goes by or something. Or I can flip it around and film myself since I'm making stupid vlogs. Uh, it's always handy to have capability to do wide angle. And, of course, you have to have a, a red lens, because I'm not going to have a light for a GoPro. And, yeah, i got to stop talking. i got to put my other lights together and get ready to go. So, my, my Sulto finally died. And... I love this thing, it's the D4i. And it, this thing, the battery lasted about 2,000 dives. So I'm super happy with it. And I went to get it replaced. And the, I don't think you can see that. But they stripped the screw. And they couldn't open the back. Should have been two simple screws. So yeah, I don't even have a dive computer. I have a, I have an extra, but it's really girly. It's the wife that I'm not gonna show you. So, but yeah, I love this thing. Sulto, send me another one <laughs> because this thing lasted over 2,000 dives on one battery and a lot of abuse. So I arrived at Dumaguete Divers. And today, I got the GoPro, little tripod that I can stick in the sand, and my regular camera, just just with the Orca Torch today, because I got to test it out, review it today. So I'm going to gear up, and we're going to hop in the scuba car. <laughs> And we'll go to the dive site. Let's see what dive site we're doing today. No, it's so girly. I don't want to wear that. That's cute. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I still didn't fix the battery. So I haven't dove in a few days, so I like to leave soap in my mask for as long as possible. I'm not going to wash it until I'm actually in the water. That'll leave a film and make it so it doesn't uh, fog up. What? It's called the slave. The slave is the pig. Really? See? That's pretty cute. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. <laughs> See? Dumagiti divers. <laughs> this car is for sale. 250,000. Dollars. <laughs> Dollars. Because this one is antique. <laughs> oh, here's your... That's not mine. Uh, I know. See, gods. That's a tilt. No. Please. Why is it so big? Don't me. It's inside out. 
This probably smells like pee. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? I Boy. am. Are you ready? <laughs> so, I believe we're, good. we're at the Poblacion dive site, Dowell Sanctuary. And I like it because it's soft and sandy and easy to get in. Yeah. But, I'm gonna go film some demos and stuff. Where's your GoPro? It's in there. So this is the Dawa Sanctuary and this particular location is Poblacion dive site and one reason I like it is the easy entry as you can see it's just super sandy and nice and it's a good place to do your open water certificate because you can just sit there in shallow water and do skills in the sand. But don't worry, the whole dive site doesn't look like this. After a few minutes, you come to the reef at about 3 meters. And it looks a little something like this. So I don't normally do the wide angle shots. And that's why I don't normally go to dive sites like this. But I took off the lenses and I had a little bit of fun just to show you guys what this dive site looks like and it it's, has extremely beautiful fields of reef and coral and all kinds of reef fish. One project I'm working on is filming different species of butterfly fish to compare with another YouTuber that is in the Caribbean so it was good to get a few clips while I'm here and of course there's another turtle pretty much a turtle on every dive site in Philippines. Anyway, I love these turtles and reefs and all that as much as the next guy, but I'm a macro lover and I gotta get to the critter hunting. But before I go, like I said earlier, I want to set up a GoPro in front of a, an enemy or a reef. And I found a good one here where there's nice soft sand that I can put the GoPro on. And this is what it looks like from the GoPro's view. But there's about 30 or 40 minutes of this footage, so I'm going to have to save it for a video of its own because it's incredible. I actually did this shot about six times this week at different angles, different anemones, different eel gardens, and stuff like that. So I'm going to start doing separate videos of just live critter footage because there was some really cool stuff that happened when I would leave the camera there for an hour and come back. The fish really would come out and it's awesome. So enough playing around, I set up my GoPro, I left it, and now it's time to put on those macro lenses and go test it out. Let's go critter hunting. So if you guys remember from a previous video, I found the mushroom coral pipe fish and I kind of filmed them just with the tail and the three macro lens. So I stumbled upon them again on this dive and I'm going to try to film the same thing but with the extra tail. So it turned out okay. To be honest it wasn't magnified as much as I thought. I figured with double the lens it should be double the magnification or closeness with super fine details. but. To be honest, I can't tell a difference at all. It's a little harder to focus even. And as usual, these rare pipefish are not really showing their faces. But at least I got a decent shot of the anemone they're in. Just a little deeper at about 21 meters, I found a real tiny ornate ghost pipefish, which is actually a relative of the mushroom coral pipefish, even though they don't look anything the same. And I got to say, I'm trying to shoot this guy with the three stacked macro lenses, and it is not easy. This guy is anything but cooperative. I got a few good shots of him, and he's beauty, but he's really tiny, and he's constantly moving away from the camera, moving away from the light. And so I have to move towards him and without trying to chase him or scare him or anything, and it's... To be honest, this is not a good test because he is super hard to film no matter what lens you got. I see photographers getting good shots of him, but all they have to do is push the button a hundred times. Click, 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 and, you know, 
go look later they may, they might have two or three good shots so it's hard to do with the video camera where you really need 10 seconds of really good clear steady footage to make anything of it right next to this pipe horse I found another juvenile with no color and these guys just find their house and then they start to morph into whatever color and texture their house is and by house I mean feathered sea star and this guy must have just arrived because he had no color yet it's pretty cool but again super hard to film As I was trying to film these guys, which was a nightmare, my guide called me over when I was done and he actually found another one. And it was about 24 or 25 meters, I think. And again, I tried to film him too. The problem was, since they're always moving away from the camera, I, I didn't want to chase him off. I didn't want to chase him too far away from his little sea star house and this guy was doing just that he was moving away from the camera away from his feathered sea star and it made me nervous i didn't want him to get eaten or get caught in the current and washed away so i just left him alone that's my number one rule is not to manipulate or touch or harm any critters even for a good shot and i wish more people would do the same so I didn't get too many good shots of these guys, even though I found three on one dive. On the way back up to a little bit more shallow, I ran into this guy. And he was quite big, so I took off all the lenses and set up the camera just for a minute, just to get a shot of him. He's pretty cool. He's at maybe 15 meters. So Brian Davies challenged me to find a really colorful crab and ever since then I haven't found any until now. I don't know what the name of these are or anything but inside this hard coral is two really colorful red crabs but they're so tiny and they're really well hidden I can't get the light and the lens in there that I don't think it's going to count. <laughs> I tried to film them and you can't even tell that it's a crab but I got a pretty good shot of the coral. I was starting to think I wasn't going to get any shots of some super macro critters since this is really a reef site, not a muck site. So I took this shot of a feathered sea star and it ain't bad. And this one as well. Just a different sea star and pretty close up. So I thought the dive was pretty much done and we're going to head back and I'm not going to get any macro shots and be able to really test out these three lenses stacked together when I came upon this Ludi, which is super rare. I've never even seen it in Philippines even though my friends have and I'm so glad and there's two of them one right next to the other. So I had plenty of time. I only well not really plenty of time. I only had three minutes to deco because this was pretty deep but I got to try out all the combinations of lenses to see what was best on this guy and I was a little disappointed I had to take off the plus three just to get it focused and the two plus tens well this whole video was just the two plus tens and I think I've got better footage before with the plus ten and the plus three so I'm trying to get this focused and stay focused and the clarity I just it's not super impressive I just expected a lot more considering these lenses are about $400 each this video is not really about the critters it's about reviewing these macro wet lenses and stacking them and everything so uh, I'm not I'm not too super impressed to be honest especially for the money So it's the next morning and what did I learn yesterday from stacking macro wet lenses? Well, first of all, what did you guys think of the footage, especially the last footage, the white Ludi break? Um, for me, I, I really wasn't impressed. I thought it should have been double the quality since I was doubling up on lenses. 
Uh, what did you guys think? I mean, I still, I keep going back to the skeleton shrimp footage because that is, that is probably the best footage I've gotten of such a small critter. And that was with just the macro plus tail and plus three put together. So compare that with the, the latest footage of that looty break where I just had the two tails and I'm not, I'm not into it. To tell you the truth, uh, the camera, maybe it was the limitations of the camera. With the extra lens, I had to be zoomed in all the way just to get past the walls of the l extra lens. And that meant, I mean, the critter had to be within an inch or less of the end of the lens, which is, as you can see with the ornate ghost pipefish, it's impossible to do with like 99% of all critters. You know without manipulating them or whatever so that's just not realistic but with this i can get a little bit farther have it zoomed in a little and still get really great footage i think mostly with the plus 10 it does most of the magnification and i feel like the three just makes it super clear and better contrast and stuff like that it's just a really perfect combination so I wouldn't waste your money on this, especially if you're married and you have to listen to the I told you so's, because these are about three to five hundred dollars, depending on where you're at. So yeah, I think I'm gonna continue going with this. I I might test this out again on something else, but I'm kind of happy with this situation. Again, I'd love to have somebody else test it with maybe a Sony A7S. A7S2, even a Sony A7R, uh, see what their capabilities are with a bunch of lenses. And to be honest, macro, uh, not a cam makes a plus 25 or 24, uh, all in one lens. So it's not stacking a bunch. So maybe that would be cool. So I'd love to get my hands on one of those and test that out. Uh, but for now, Think you guys are gonna see a lot more footage from this and uh yeah i'm okay with that also what did you guys think of those live reef videos i know i only showed like a preview but if you guys want to see a lot more of that make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because i i've done like four or five as of now and they're between 10 and 40 minutes long so i'm gonna make them separate videos on their own but I set up GoPros everywhere, like anemones, these tunnels with a bunch of fish in them, uh, another angle outside the tunnel, and then one really impressive shot was the eel garden, where it's just thousands of, uh, what are they called, garden eels. And as soon as I left, they all came up, and it's insane footage. And there's even these huge fish that came in that were feeding, and all the eels hid and the fish were in front of the camera. Yeah, you guys just need to go watch those because awesome stuff happens when I just left the camera and went diving for an hour and came back. When I was gone, the fish went crazy. It was awesome. So make sure to subscribe. You'll see more of those in the next week or two. And this is episode one. <laughs> Editing it right now, I realize I, I have a lot of work to do to get better. So... I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much if you watched this far. And make sure to subscribe. Bye.